we're going to talk a little bit about digital profiles. Can you tell me what digital profiles, what the term means to you? Uh, yeah, you know, I'm very excited about digital profiles. I think it's uh, a hugely interesting area and one that's um, not well understood in that um, when we think of uh, where around um, the world online, where is the information about us held? So if I think of uh, government organisations, so Land Revenue has tax information, the, the Ministry of Health has health information about me, my employer IBM has a whole host of information around what I've done, what I've achieved, you know, I've got my HR records. And then I think of me as a private individual, I've got banks, I've got tel telcos, Facebook and Twitter and all those kind of things. So this is vast amount of data <coughs> and there's value in that data. And the reason I know there's value in that data is I go shopping at the supermarket, take a loyalty card with me and once I do my transaction, swap my loyalty card, they give me two dollars for just tell, letting them know that it's me buying the stuff. And so you sort of think, well, what is the value in them knowing the transactions uh, I've had for a whole year, but not just in their shop, but in every single shop. And then what is the value of them knowing all this digital information about what I do, when I do it, where I am now. Have a Blackberry with a sort of GPS on there, you know, you can track me. You, you know everything about what I'm doing day to day, apart from what I'm sort of thinking or feeling. And, and the case is, so, so, so what does that mean to the individual? It means you don't really have control. <clears throat> Someone else has little pieces of control about you. And, 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 and I believe that that's really wrong. <laughs> I think the individual should have control over that data to some degree, while we always have rights to let others access it. I think that it, it almost becomes a personal asset, and an asset that has value. So we, we, we have value here, and we'll allow others to access it. And I think there's some monetarization aspects there. And I think that if, if individuals don't have this capability, then organisations, specifically the telcos, <laughs> and then rightly so, they know a lot about us, they know who we talk to, how long we talk to that person. <clears throat> They're trying to, and, and rightly so, provide more customer service, customer experience to their, their uh, clients, and the, the aggregation point to all their sort of um, personal information, information with their friends and their family. And the case, that's a really good thing to us, but also it gives them a lot of power over us in terms of a lot of access to information about us, our friends and our family, and it's a case of is that the right way to go. It's right if they pay me for it, <laughs> but if they, if, if they take it and I just sign up, sign up, give data, give data, give information about me, then we need to sort of perhaps hold on and just think about what am I actually doing and what are the impacts. You know, at the moment the impact isn't much, I don't think. But we go five years out, we go ten years out, there's a huge amount of content and information. And we just don't know how that content and information is going to be used. So it's just something we've got to start to look at. Because the, the tying in of telecom employees with our personal private life is happening. And the gap is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. So we just need to sort of be a little careful, I think, and a little lively on that. And certainly, you know, IBM is looking at this area, especially around the security aspects, the trust aspects how you do financial transactions and how people know who you are, but there, there's also a personal or cultural um, aspect to that as well that sometimes gets left to one side. So I guess to paraphrase, paraphrase what you're saying is that there's that two things need to go on. One is more aggregation of all that data in, in one place, and the second is giving the, the individual some sort of um, <coughs> visibility and control over that. Yeah, yeah for, for sure. You know, we, we go to a new external service and we have a put our user ID and password, typically an email address and password and we do that lots and lots of times. And there's, you know, open ideas there to try and help make that an easier um, activity. So you just put a URL in and you're, you're, you're authenticated and authorised. Um, but there's no aspect of trust there. When we think of aggregation of our contacts, friends and family, then um, open social does some of that. So there's a lot of these sort of services coming out that are aggregating this content together, but it's not necessarily done with the individual in mind. <laughs> it's done for the service provider in mind. And while that's a good thing, that's, that has to happen, it just there comes a point where who has the control? And, and, and there's a little grey grayness there at the moment. Cool. Awesome. Thanks, Frank. Oh, no worries. <laughs>